Hey guys, welcome back to Why Wait. Today's project, repacking the bearings. Now I already did one camper today. I did my buddies across the way. He's gonna help me film here in a little bit and while I do mine. So if that's something you're interested in checking out, as usual, stick around and we'll get to it. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be repacking the wheel bearings with some fresh grease. If it's not something you're used to doing, it's not a hard project, it's really not that intimidating. Um, I usually try to do it about once a year and follow along, it's something you can do yourself. Now, I've already taken the tire off as you can see. I'm not gonna get into how to jack your camper up. Every camper is different. I have an auto leveling system, hydraulic auto leveling system, which I actually use and I just raise it up enough to where the tire just comes up like a half inch off the ground so I can get it off. And I even leave the other one on just in case it was a failure with my hydraulic jacks. It would only come down a half inch onto the other tire. And of course the other tires on the other side are still on. I have bottle jacks. Um, I just don't feel like carrying jack stands around, but this is how I do it. Um, that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. But that's basically just step one. You know, break the lug nuts while the camper's still on the ground, loosen them up, then jack your camper up. However, by any means that you feel is most safest for you, that's just, you know, be safe about it, however you choose to do it. And that takes us to the next step, which is gonna be removing this dust cover right here. Um, by the way, excuse the sunglasses, but the sun is blazing out here and it's right in my eyes. So I would do the other side of the camper and film it in the shade except it's blowing about 30 miles per hour on the other side of the camper. So this was actually the best option. So I hope that's not too distracting anyways. Now, why is it important to repack um, your bearings? Well, what happens is if those bearings, um, if the grease gets too old, if one of the seals uh, behind it opens up, all the grease can come out. The grease actually will get inside your brake drum onto your brake shoes and then you're not going to have any traction when you go to stop. Not to mention that if there's no grease left in your bearings, that's when things are going to start to overheat. That's when it's going to get hot. That's when you have blowouts and other malfunctions. So it's a real um, important safety thing to do this. And while I'm under here and while I do this, I go ahead and also check my brakes. I pull the uh, emergency brake breakaway cable, which I'll show you to make sure everything still works and it's activated. I'll check my brake shoes to see the, you know, enough thickness on them. And I'll kind of go through and touch base on how you do that as well. Just all good things we like to do before we hit the road for a long trip. And if you guys follow the channel, you may know that we are doing a bunch of prepping, a bunch of maintenance. And I'll put a link up to the videos up here of all the other stuff we've been doing to get ready to hit the road. Because we are heading out in April and we're going out west and we're going to be traveling for the whole spring and summer out west. So these are things I just want to get done while we're stationary here in Texas and make sure everything's safe and sound. Uh, just on another quick note too, I usually only do one at a time because you should really try to keep everything together on this wheel. All the bearings, the washers, and all the parts of it, uh, they're not really interchangeable. They don't recommend that. So if you start taking all four off at once and you got bearings laying everywhere, I would just focus on one. I'll usually go through, do the whole job, all the way all the way back to installing the tire on it and everything before I move on to the next one. I have laid out every item you pretty much need. We need brake cleaner, plenty of grease. Make sure you get the right kind of grease. Uh, it's red and tacky. You wanna make sure it's a high temperature grease. I cannot stress having enough shop towels a uh, brake gauge this is going to adjust and check our brake shoes on the drums a mallet or hammer possibly a flathead screwdriver this is a seal puller to pull the grease seals you can get by without it but it's a nice little tool to have set of pliers these are the new seals we will be putting on i always order one extra so i have five of those this is a breaker bar and uh you're gonna need some sockets 
to loosen the lug nuts. And this is a torque wrench, so when you're done, you can torque it back to spec. And I also cannot recommend having plenty of gloves. So helping me out today is my buddy Ron. As you guys know, if you've been following along with the channel, Megan is back in Kentucky. So I got my buddy here, Ron, helping me out filming. In fact, we just got done doing his camper. So if it looks like I've already uh, tackled the job, we already did his and I uh, figured that was a good way to make all my mistakes on his camper. That way when I come to do it for you guys and film it, I look real professional like I know what I'm doing. First step, talked about taking the tire off already. Next, we're gonna knock this dust cap off here. And sometimes you can just kind of bang them off. They're a little pliable. Just gently kind of pop it off here. Okay, there we go. Nice and clean inside. Now, when we did Ron's solitude just a little while ago, what we found inside the dust cover was actually a bunch of grease. And that can be okay because they have this little zerk fitting here and sometimes um, some placers are gonna hook a grease gun up to this and just pump a bunch of grease right into the hub. At first we thought some of his seals had broken and grease was getting everywhere, but then we realized that was just the case because he had fresh grease in here, fresh grease in some areas, but his bearings still had a bunch of old black grease in them. So you can tell mine haven't been, uh, no one's been pumping grease in there. So this is nice and clean, which it should be. And this is just to protect the, uh, the outside bearing here from getting dust and things into it. Sometimes you want to check your little rubber seal right here. These do pop off. If these are damaged, you do want to get that replaced. So, but this one looks okay. And we'll just set that off to the side. Now down here, you're going to have either a cotter pin or a retention clip. Um, I have the cotter pin. That's all I'm used to seeing until today. And we did a uh, Ron solitude and he had a retention clip that just kind of slides uh, over here. So, if, if you have that, it's just a simple little screwdriver, just pop it off. Now with the cotter pins, <clears throat> I should have ordered some more. That's something I, I should have thought about doing. I kind of forgot about that. So I'm gonna try to be real easy with these cotter pins because I have to reuse them. But honestly, your best bet is just to throw them away, get some new cotter pins. They're obviously cheap enough. But today I'm gonna try to bend these back and not break them. Otherwise I'm gonna have to uh, make a trip up to the store and get some new ones. <laughs> So just get you some pliers and just bend these back. And I can see that hopefully. Okay, and we're gonna try to reuse that cotter pin right there. Next, you're gonna have what's called the castle nut. And it shouldn't be that tight. It should usually only be about hand tight. Sometimes you may need a pliers just to break it loose, but usually you can just screw that right off. I recommend getting a box or something to put everything onto, especially if you're doing this over the gravel or dirt, you don't want these bearings falling in and getting a bunch of dirt on them. So we're gonna screw this castle nut off. After that, we should be able to just slide this hub right off now. And now the front bearing is gonna come with it. So you either wanna kinda of keep your hand here to catch it. Sometimes it'll pop off as you do this. All right. Okay, washer comes off next. It's in front of your bearing. Set that down oh, and good catch. <laughs> there we go. That's the uh, front bearing. And we're just gonna set that over here. Kind of keep it wrapped up, keep it clean. I'm gonna go ahead and take the sub off. There we go. Okay, when you got it off, you're gonna look in the back here. And this is your grease seal back here. Now what you should see in here is pretty much something similar to this. If you have a bunch of grease in here, or if this looks like it was damaged, well that means your seal failed and you have grease all in here, which is gonna affect your brake shoes. So, and this is what we're gonna be changing today. These are the, the parts that we have some new parts. You kinda just wanna check everything out, look it over, make sure everything looks okay. Check the thickness of your brake shoes. We have a little device that we're gonna actually measure and see how they look. More than likely, you don't want to save this seal anyway, so if you damage it, it's okay. But this is a nice little tool to have, so you just kind of put it under there. And you're just going to give a pop. There we go. Okay. That one looks okay, but uh, we got a bunch of extra ones, so we're just going to toss it anyways. Okay. Now what you have behind it 
is your other bearing. That's the rear bearing. And uh, when you take it out, you want to kind of give it a quick look over, make sure there's no pitting or discoloration from what we you know could be caused from high heat or anything like that. These are also, they're not that expensive to replace either. So sometimes you can just go ahead and if you're gonna get the seals, some people just replace the bearings while they're at it. But these look okay, I'm gonna reuse these. I'm just gonna set it over here with the other ones. You have the inside of your hub and what you have is called the race in here. These are the races. These are what the bearings sit in on each side. You wanna also look at those, inspect them, make sure there's no discoloration, no kind of dents or weird, just anything that looks out of the ordinary with those. And these look fine as well. Now, when you're doing this, this is gonna be a messy job but you wanna to try to keep any grease from getting inside here. Because if you get grease inside here, you're gonna to have to clean that all up as well. Again, you don't want the grease in here because that's what touches the brake shoes and that's what will affect your brakes. But we're gonna go ahead and scoop as much of this old grease out as we can. Come over to the other side. You can get a shot of that. That's pretty clean looking inside there. And the grease was mostly still red. Now, your grease, grease may not be red. I use uh, Lucas Red and Tacky Grease, so it's gonna be red. There's different kind of greases you can use for this. Just make sure it's a high temperature grease and that you get the right one. Once you have the inside of the hub cleaned out and you've checked out your races and they look good, we're gonna clean off the spindle right here. Get all the old grease off the spindle. We're gonna go ahead and hit it up with some brake cleaner now. This is where you either wanna have like an oil drip pan, a box, something just to kind of catch all this brake cleaner that's gonna drip off here. It'll soak into this box. Um, never use like an air gun or to blow it off with uh, air. Brake, uh, brake dust is, I guess, extremely harmful to breathe in. So you don't wanna be blowing that all up in the air. That's just the tip there, so. drip a little bit we're gonna get the inside of the hub just set that upside down gonna spray off the bearings I'm gonna look in here to see if there's any chunks of grease, anything I need to wipe out or wipe clean. This is actually really clean looking. There's not much I have to do in here. I really like the way this looks. Test the brake. Now, this is a magnet right here. And what you do is when you, when you hit your brake, this activates the magnet, which sucks in and pushes your brake shoes out to stop the drum from spinning. A quick and easy way to test to make sure all the wiring and everything is working is to go pull your emergency breakaway cable. Um, so let's go ahead and walk up there and we'll go do that right now. Uh, due to the high winds like I was talking about earlier on this side of the camper, this footage was almost unusable so I'm just going to do some voiceover. All you have to do is pull this cable right here, your breakaway cable, pull it out and just go spin any tire that is jacked up in the air, air and it should stop it right away and you know your breakaway cable is working. While we got these off, it's a good time to see if the brake shoes need to be adjusted. Now they are coming out with uh, self-adjusting hubs that you can put on here now where you don't have to do this, but I don't have those. So I have a little uh, brake adjuster, brake gauge right here. What you wanna do, put this part on the inside, tighten it down, okay? You got your inside diameter, you flip it around and you're going to put it on the outside of the shoes and see what you got. Now I have maybe an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch of play. <clears throat> what we learned on the last camper was, I think that's okay. <laughs> because we tightened, last time we had about that much play, we tightened it down and it was pretty much impossible to get this back on. So I think I'm going to leave that where it's at. If you do need to adjust them, there's a little brake adjustment uh, switch down in here. There's a little tab and you can almost see the ridges. Actually on this one, you can see it real good right here. And 
you can either get to it from right here, or even if you don't take your hub off, you can get to it from behind. There's a little hole behind, put a screwdriver in there, and you just pop it up, or you pop it down, depending on if you need them tighter or looser. I'm gonna leave these where it's at. When we put it back on, I'm gonna give it a spin and see how they feel, okay? I have all that done. Now's the time to repack the bearings with some fresh grease. <clears throat> now, I've been repacking them by hand. It's the way I've always done it. Um, there's probably some more efficient ways to do it out there because there's some products on Amazon. We can just put these right in the thing and, and pump it and it's just gonna put fresh grease right into it. I might actually invest in one myself after uh, doing this and packing it by hand. It's a little time consuming, so, and they're not that expensive. I'll even put a link down to the, uh, the grease, the bearing uh, packer. I'll put a link down to it on Amazon. But I'll also put a link down to everything you've seen today, all the stuff I use in case you guys are interested in, in checking out any of that out. All right, <clears throat> let's get our grease. And what I'm gonna do here, you're gonna wanna start with the bigger bearing, which is your rear bearing. Gonna scoop some of this out. Just put it right in the palm of your hand there. It's just take it and you're just gonna do that on your hand. It's gonna push it up into this little gap here. And as it pushes up into there, you're gonna start seeing the old grease come out. And you're gonna wanna just go around, all the way around. The grease was, it's either gonna be black when it starts coming out. As you can see, you can see right here, it's starting to come out. And it's actually looking pretty good. Gonna go all the way around doing this. <clears throat> now, what I like to do is I go along, it's not totally necessary, and it probably just depends on how bad this uh, grease looks that's coming out. The grease that's coming out actually looks pretty fresh, and but I'm gonna just take that and kind of wipe that stuff off as I go around, and then I'll just keep on packing. A little bit of the old grease that might have popped out out of here. Oh, definitely have a trash can nearby. I'm just gonna take a little bit more and I'm just gonna grease this up all over on the outside now that it's all packed in there. On the inside, it's okay to be liberal with it. You can definitely, it, you wanna have just good coverage just all over the place. Now you notice the bearing is sort of a cone shape. It tapers off. The cone part, the smaller part, always goes into the hub. So on this rear bearing, actually before I drop it in there, and you want to grease the inside of your bearing all over that, the races, get them in there, nice and good. Drop it in there. Make sure it's seated properly. Okay, this is where you're going to want to put on a fresh pair of gloves, which you're going to be doing a lot when you do this job anyways. You have your grease seal, brand new ones. Got these off e-trailer. Uh, again, by no means am I affiliated with e-trailer, but I get a lot of my parts there. I've always been happy with their uh, shipping, their customer service. You can put your vehicle profile, your camper profile, right into the search engine. And it usually when you go to look up something, it tells you if it's gonna be good for that truck or that camper. So anyways, we have the grease seal and we are going to just gently set this right here. You don't wanna force it in. Now what you're going to want to get is a piece of wood. Now they have a tool for this as well. Um, I'm not even too sure what it is, but they do have a tool for it if you're curious about that. I'm going to go get a piece of wood. We're going to put it across here and tap it down so it goes in uh, to the hub evenly. Anything will work as long as it fits in here. Make sure it's clean. You don't want a bunch of dirt on it because when you're hitting it, you don't want dirt falling into your, your bearing. So just set it on there nice and flush. Tap it down. What you want to check for is it should be nice and flush. It's a little raised up on this side. <clears throat> nice and flush. All set to go on that. Now before we put this hub back on, we want to go ahead and grease up the spindle. And just again, don't be shy with it. Get it all covered all over there. Get that all set. Now we're going to <coughs> repack the front bearing here. It's exactly the same way we did the last one. Work your way around. 
And you can see the stuff coming out of here is a little bit more black. All right, so we're just gonna kind of set that off to the side, get some fresh gloves. We're gonna put this hub on and then we'll slide that in. Time to reassemble. Time to put our hub back on. And let's pick it up nice and carefully. We got the hub back on. You want to just kind of give it a little bit of turn. And you should just have just about a half a rotation or so and you just kind of spin it. That's about good right there. Put a little bit more grease on this front bearing. Remember, cone side in. And you're just going to slip that right into there. Okay. Seat that in. Next is your washer. Put some grease on it. Goes right over it. And then the castle nut. Spin that on. You don't want to over tighten it by any means, otherwise nothing's going to spin. Just get it just basically where it stops and then just back it off about a quarter turn and you'll be good with that. Lastly, take your cotter pin and you're going to have to find your little hole. Sometimes you may have to adjust the castle nut one way or the other to find where it slips back into. Right there. See if you can't slip your cotter pin right back in there. And so you guys got everything installed back on, last thing, you're just gonna pop your dust cap back on there. Couple gentle taps. That's it, you've just repacked your bearings. Easy as can be. Uh, if you don't run into any problems, you can honestly probably do this job by yourself, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. I mean, usually the prep is what takes the longest. It's not that bad of a job, it's not something to really be intimidated by, and you can save some money by doing it yourself. Pretty easy job, so. Anyways, we're gonna throw the tire back on here, uh, tighten the lug nuts down, and go do the other three, and we'll be all set. Routine maintenance. I'm going to go over my checklist of the monthly and yearly items that I do constantly to keep my camper running at its optimal performance. That's about, and just give a quick little squirt on the all those two things out there. That's, um, that's two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't have that in the video. Clean up inside here, clean inside here again. So I like to go through and I change all the batteries and our smoke alarms. Or I just use this three-in-one oil sometimes.